Texas and part two of Microfilm 101. What exactly constitutes preservation microfilm? In short, preservation microfilm must faithfully reproduce the content with lasting permanence and accessibility. Let's start with the basic physical features of microfilm, such as size, polarity, base, emulsion, reduction, and orientation or position. The standard sizes of microphotography are 105 millimeter, 35 millimeter, and 16 millimeter roll film. In roll form, 105 millimeter film is typically used in specialty fields like aerial photography. In microphotography, it's chopped into four by six inch flat sheets to become microfiche. Microfiche utilizes high reduction ratios to fit 100 plus pages, photos, or drawings onto a single 4 by 6 sheet. We'll talk more about reduction ratios later. Just think of it as how big or small the film pictures are. 35 millimeter microfilm is used in traditional motion picture film. The rolls can be cut to any length, but for microfilming purposes, it usually comes in 100 foot unperforated reels. The reduction ratio and page orientation, which we'll talk about later, determine how many images a single reel can hold. It could be 600 to 1,000. To save space, some micro publishers have been known to splice together multiple small reels to create larger 1,000 foot reels. This may be useful for you to know if you want to digitize a title that's stored with a micro publisher. Be sure to ask the length of the reel and the precise titles included on it. 16 millimeter film is most often used by government agencies or corporations for records reproductions, like those canceled checks mentioned in the first tutorial. Like microfiche, the reduction ratios on 16 millimeter film are greater than 35 millimeter film, enabling more content per reel. For instance, a 130 foot reel of 16 millimeter can hold as many as 2,400 sheets of 8.5 by 11 letters or 10,000 canceled checks. Of these three formats, only 35 millimeter is considered for preservation. The targets at proper reduction ratios should remain large enough to read without the aid of a magnifier, which also means, theoretically, the newspaper's text can be read with minimal magnification. This is also ideal for digitization because the larger images usually create better quality digital images. Best practice in preservation microfilm creates three generations of film. The camera master negative, the print master negative made from the camera master, and the surface copy made from the print master. A negative is when the lightest areas of the original image appear as the darkest areas on the film. When duplicated onto positive film, these areas reverse to become as the original, such as black text on white paper. Each generation of film suffers some measurable resolution loss, making the camera master the sharpest, most accurate of all generations. In preservation microfilm, the camera master must be a silver halide emulsion on polyester base film. Pliable photographic emulsion of any kind must have a solid base to adhere to. So let's look at the base first. There are three basic film bases, nitrate, acetate, and polyester. Nitrate was the first roll film commercially available. It ushered in the age of motion pictures. Unfortunately, nitrate is highly flammable since it's chemically the same as a blasting explosive like gun cotton. It can also deteriorate very rapidly if it doesn't burn first. It literally turns to dust, but not before becoming a gooey, self-combustible mess. Clearly, nitrate was not a final solution. By the late 1930s, cellulose acetate film was introduced and it completely replaced nitrate by 1950. Acetate came to be known as safety film for obvious reasons. Once acetate was on the market, microfilming expanded rapidly, particularly for newspapers. A great deal of newspaper content can still be found on acetate film and may be in relatively good condition. Thankfully, much of the early newspapers on nitrate microfilm were transferred to acetate as well. Still, for all the safety that acetate offered, it wasn't without fault. Vinegar syndrome, as it is commonly known, is caused by excessive heat and moisture breaking down the cellulose molecules into acidic acid, which actually smells like vinegar. The base becomes brittle, tears easily, and shrinks, causing the emulsion to buckle or channel. The syndrome can also affect film nearby, so that reels with vinegar syndrome need to be removed from collections and, like their nitrate predecessors, transferred as soon as possible. Even under the best conditions, acetate won't hold its preservation value. You'd be glad to get 50 years before vinegar syndrome set in, or 150 years if you're really, really lucky. Enter polyester. Available by 1955, its preservation value didn't take hold until much later. You can virtually tow the space shuttle with polyester film. About the worst thing you can say about it is that it's more apt to break the equipment than catch on fire or tear. It's also chemically very stable. 
And because it's strong and stable, polyester is much more flexible than acetate, so it can meet the challenges of mass duplication and use over time. Under the right storage conditions, it has a life expectancy of 500 years. Hence, polyester is the preservation choice. Did I mention the life expectancy is 500 years? <laughs> there are several ways to identify the film types. Kodak is the most common manufacturer you'll run across, but you might also find Agfa, Fuji, and a few lesser known brands. The brand names are usually printed along the edge of the film. Safety film is also usually printed along the edges of acetate film, and sometimes nitrate is printed on nitrate film. However, these will transfer if the film has been duplicated, so you can't really rely on it as an authenticator of base or generation. The best way to know what film base you have goes something like this. Try to make a small tear. If it tears, it's acetate or nitrate. If it doesn't, it's polyester. Cut a single exposure from the reel and set it on fire. If it burns, it's nitrate. If it melts, it's either polyester or acetate. If it's the latter, Hold the reel up to a light source and look through the piping side of the spool. If you can see light through the film, it's polyester. If not, it's acetate. Now let's talk about emulsion. Emulsion is the light sensitive layer atop the film base and it's here that the images reside. There are three emulsions we're concerned with in microfilm. Diazo, vesicular, and silver halide, also called silver gelatin or just silver. Almost all preservation microfilm camera masters are silver, leaving diazo and vesicular as primarily duplication films. Silver film can be both negative and positive, and it can be used as a camera master, print master, or service copy. Diazo film as a duplicate will maintain the polarity of the master. So if the master is a positive, the dupe will also be a positive, whereas vesicular film will reverse the polarity, meaning a negative will become a positive. As diazo and vesicular have been used less and less, it has become harder to know which generation of silver film you're actually looking at. Duplicates are made through contact printing, emulsion to emulsion. You might not know exactly which generation you're looking at, but you can make a pretty good guess this way. Odd generation films like 1, 3, and 5 can be read left to right through the base side of the film, while even generations 2, 4, and 6 have right reading through the emulsion side. And since anything above a third generation is rare, a first generation camera master or second and third generation print master or service copy are the most likely choices. Diazo emulsion uses diazonium salt and dyes to create a very dense emulsion. The dye come in a variety of colors, including black, which is most common and happens to look very much like silver halide. The best way to know the difference is that diazo emulsion is shiny on both the emulsion and film base sides, while silver is matte on the emulsion side but shiny on the base side. Because the salt and dye is so light sensitive, it fades over time, even in the dark, and is therefore unsuitable for preservation. Vesicular emulsion also uses a diazonium salt and dye mix that's sandwiched between two base layers. The film is developed using heat, which causes the formation of tiny bubbles in the base. Incidentally, the base is always polyester because acetate and obviously nitrate can't take the heat. Regardless, vesicular bubbles can't take the rigors of handling and the bubbles themselves will continue to expand and burst if exposed to high temperatures like reader lights. Like diazo, vesicular is not preservation friendly. That brings us to silver halide. Silver halide is literally silver particles suspended in light sensitive gelatin. As with film stock, under the right conditions, silver will last 500 years or more, and it holds up very well to the rigors of use, making it the only emulsion useful for preservation. Did I mention it will last 500 years? <laughs> Camera masters are almost always silver halide, and for the reasons explained thus far, it makes a natural selection for multi-generational films as well. Of course, silver can be compromised. Inefficient washing during development can cause chemical stains that will deteriorate the film and reduce legibility of textural content. Oxidation, commonly known as redox, will produce small red blotches on the film. It, too, will worsen until the image is unrecognizable. Off-gassing of enclosures, like acidic cardboard boxes or plastic sleeves, will produce an effect known as silvering. You're likely to experience at least one of these three defects when working with large amounts of microfilm. In most cases, removal of the affected reel will stop the deterioration and its duplication will save the images. In some cases, digitization of the images may show signs of the problem, but the text will remain legible. In the worst cases, text has been compromised beyond recognition, but this is very rare. In the next tutorial, we'll look at reduction ratios, orientation, and other factors important in preservation microfilm. 
Until then, keep up the don't panic mantra. 